The assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Jakaya Marisho Kikwati, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. I request protocol to exhort, escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Jakaya Mrisho Kikweti, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Mr. President, <coughs> Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Heads of Delegation, Distinguished Delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I congratulate my brother, Sam Kutesa of the Republic of Uganda, on his well deserved election as President of the 69th session of the General Assembly. While wishing him every success in, in the discharge of his duties and responsibilities, my delegation and I promise him of our full cooperation and support. Allow me also to pay tribute to his predecessor, His Excellency, his Excellency John Ash of Antigua and Barbuda for his remarkable leadership of the 68th session. Mr. President, our illustrious Secretary General, our illustrious Secretary General, His Excellency Ban Ki-moon deserves praise and appreciation for his leadership and the good work he's doing for our esteemed organization. He has been performing his duty with courage, dedication, passion, and commitment in driving the United Nations agenda. We will always be grateful to him. Mr. President, we welcome the and fully endorse the theme of this year's debate, delivering on and implementing a transformative 2015 development agenda. We see its discussion making important contributions in the intergovernmental negotiations on the post-2015 goals that are about to start. Mr. President, as we dedicate our time and efforts to the negotiations on the post-2015 development agenda, we must not lose sight of the unfinished business of the Millennium Development Goals. It is important that the targets and indica indicators that will not be accomplished are factored properly in the agenda, in the new agenda. In the meantime, we should ensure that we use the remaining 461 days to accelerate the pace of implementing the MDGs. Mr. President, the issue of financing, the implementation of the post-2015 development agenda must be given special attention. I'm mentioning this matter because experience has taught us that other factors aside will fall short of, the, of attaining a number of the MDGs targets and indicators because of unpredictable, unreliable, insufficient, and untimely availability of financial resources. Therefore, for the post-2015 development agenda to be achieved, we must devise a mechanism or mechanisms of ensuring stable, predictable, and reliable sources of finance for the implementation. Mr. President, there is more to the year 2015 than the deadline of the MDGs and the onset of the post-2015 sustainable goals. The year 2015 is also a deadline for the world to conclude a legally binding climate change agreement. We thank the UN Secretary General for convening the Climate Summit, which took place 
on the 23rd this month here at the United Nations. At United Nations. It afforded us a unique opportunity to put our minds together and deliberate on the way to save this planet from disaster and advance on a clean development pathways. It was very opportune indeed to hold this summit two months before the COP20 conference in Lima in December this year, and one year before COP21 in Paris next year. In many ways, the summit may help make the work in Peru not to be so difficult. As you know, a su success at Lima will mean a lot for the Paris Conference, where we expect to conclude a legally binding climate agreement. We know it is not easy, but Tanzania and Africa as a whole is appealing to all countries from all continents on this planet to do whatever it takes to ensure that COP21 in Paris, December 2015, delivers on the expectations of all of us. Failure should not be an option. Mr. President, United Nations reforms are long overdue. Reports that consultations and negotiations are not showing encouraging signs of progress is very frustrating indeed. We should remain steadfast and vigilant, not to allow the momentum to be lost. We humbly request you, Mr. President, to use your good offices and long-standing diplomatic skills to revitalize the process. To keep it on track, we must keep the flame glowing. Mr. President, global peace and security is in a state of flux. The events occurring in North Africa, the Middle East, Eastern Europe, the Great Lakes region, and the Horn of Africa are matters of concern to all of us. Equally important, the menace of terrorism, illicit exploitation of natural resources, poaching, illicit trade in narcotic drugs and weapons are making the world less secure. Terrorism is assuming new dimensions, making it the big threat of the moment because of its, indis of its indiscriminate, lethal, and callous character. Hundreds of innocent people have lost their lives or have been abducted with fatal consequences. No country is insulated and nobody is safe. As such, it calls for all of us to play an active role in the fight against terrorism and cross-border crime. Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, ISIS, and other terrorist organizations should not be allowed to have their way. Libya should not be left to disintegrate. The senseless fighting in the Central African Republic and South Sudan must be brought to an end. This world, under the leadership of the United Nations Security Council, and regional organizations has the capacity to do exactly that. Let us do what is required of us to stop the bloodshed, stop the loss of life, stop the suffering to innocent people, and stop the destruction of property. Mr. President, the horrifying scenes of bombing and death of innocent women, children, as well as men in the recent hostilities between Israel and Palestine is heartbreaking. Unfortunately, this conflict has been going on for far too long, where a lasting solution is known. Two states living side by side harmoniously. This solution has been elusive. Time has now come for the United Nations, the United States of America, Russia, Europe, and other global and regional powers to come together in concerted efforts to make it happen. We should not wait any longer. Mr. President, with regards to the question of Western Sahara, let me reiterate our appeal, the appeal I made last year to the United Nations, United Nations Security Council to do everything within its powers to resolve this problem once and for all. Honestly, I cannot comprehend 
why this problem has, which has happened about the same time with that of West Timor, nearly 40 years ago, should remain unresolved up to this day. What are those insurmountable challenges impeding the UN to end this impasse? To end the impasse, please, do the needful and put the Sahrawi question to rest. I know you can. Once again, we in Tanzania wish to join others who spoke before us in calling for ending the sanctions and embargo against Cuba and its people. For over 50 years, the embargo has condemned the people of Cuba, including innocent children and women, into perpetual hardships and poverty. It is high time this embargo is lifted and the people of Cuba are given the opportunity to live in dignity like everybody else on this planet. Mr. President, the General Assembly is being held at a time when our brothers and sisters in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea are confronting the worst outbreak of the deadly Ebola epidemic. In the three countries, together with Nigeria and the DRC, some 2,400 people have lost their lives already. The disease, which has no cure or vaccine yet, presents a major threat to the countries where the disease is known to exist. But it also presents a threat to the, to the neighboring countries and beyond. Unless the world succeeds to control the spread of this disease, there is every danger that it can become a global epidemic. Mr. President, our collective efforts in this regard is the best way forward. I believe the world has the technology, has the knowledge, and the financial resources which, if put together, can stand up against the threat posed by Ebola. We should also continue to support the efforts of our scientists, world scientists, who are, making tireless, who are working tirelessly day and night in search of cure and a vaccine. Mr. President, we applaud the efforts being taken by the United Nations, the WHO, the U.S. government, and other countries with the technical and technological capabilities in assisting the affected countries and in the fight against the disease worldwide. We request four things. One, that this support be continued and actually bolstered where possible until the, the spread of the disease is put under control. Two, assist other nations in West Africa and elsewhere on the African continent to build capacities for surveillance, isolation, and treatment. Three, efforts to get the cure, to get cure and vaccine be intensified to save the, the lives of those infected now and prevent others from being infected. Number four, and finally, please, help Africa. Help African nations so that the stigma that is developing against Africa is stopped because of Ebola. Reports that the number of people from other continents, that there are pe people from other continents are now shying away from coming to Africa and canceling travel plans because of Ebola is disturbing. It is threatening to kill the all-important tourism industry, trade, and investment flows to Africa. May the United Nations and Friends of Africa please help us to tell the world that Africa is a continent of 54 countries, not a country of 54 provinces. Not all countries in Africa have the, have the disease. Moreover, many countries are far away from the concerned countries in West Africa. In fact, the affected countries are closer to Europe than they are to Kenya, to Tanzania, or South Africa, in Eastern and Southern, Af Southern Africa, to mention about a few. As a matter of fact, they are 9 to 11 hours away from, by air from these countries to cancel travel to our parts of Africa is incomprehensible 
and the gross injustice to the continent. Mr. President, I'm confident that this seven-day debate on the theme delivering on and implementing a transformative post-2015 agenda, development agenda, affords us another opportunity to define a bright future for ourselves, for our children, for our children's children, and their grandchildren. We should seize this moment to build on the success stories, on the lessons from many countries and peoples who have been successful. We should also learn from the challenges and failures during the implementation of the MDGs in conceiving the goals, targets, and indicators of the next or the 2015 new agenda. Tanzania stands ready to cooperate with the rest of, me of the members of the United Nations family in building consensus on the post-2015 development goals. Mr. President, allow me to conclude by appealing to everyone here to, to promise to work for a post-2015 development agenda that will make the world a better place for all of us to live in. I thank you for your kind attention. Asante sana. Merci buku. Moshe Gracias. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the United Republic of Tanzania for the statement just made. May I request representatives to remain seated while we greet the President. 